All right, welcome everybody. I'm Scott. This is Drawing Together with Artist Network. If you're new, we join together every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, and we draw together. Uh, so it's great to see uh, all you familiar people here. So welcome everybody. Um, uh, before we get started on the drawing, I do want to call out something new that we have here. So I pinned a message at the top that, um, that provides a link to the Drawing Together page on Artist Network. One of the things we added there is um, I put together a list of drawing materials for you to buy. So you can actually find everything you need right there through that link. And so if you need to buy everything you can, if you just want to replenish your stock of pencils, you can. So we kind of partnered with Blick for that and they're going to, they kind of curated their selection of all their products just to, to provide what you need for your drawing here. So I just want to throw that out there. Also, um, if, you, uh, if you're new, you're going to want to know that you can be drawing along. There's a reference image in the description below. Uh, and we love to see your drawings. I saw some really great drawings of the pie last week uh, posted on the episode page for Drawing Together. So those were awesome, really nice work. Um, this is what we're working on today though. This is a drawing of this dog, you know, pet portraits. I've been seeing a lot of them online lately and it's something that I hear a lot about. And so I thought, well, why don't I give it a shot? It's been a while since I've drawn a dog. So um, that was kind of my thinking here. And one of the things that really stood out to me in doing this was uh, how engaging the texture was. This is ultimately about texture and I just wanted to draw fur I think more than anything. And so I want to kind of dig into that and show you how I did this, get your thoughts about, about how you draw fur and maybe some of the challenges you might be facing so we can kind of work through those together. So um, th again this is what I'll be working on today. You can bring up the reference image, that's the one right below me. Um, the paper that I'm using is a Strathmore gray toned paper. Um, it, uh, and this is a nine by 12, a little bit larger than I've been working lately. I've been working a lot of eight by tens. This is a nine by 12. Um, I have a vine charcoal that I'm working with as well as a range of these, uh, charcoal pencils. So I've got white charcoal and I've got my medium and I got a dark pencil here. Uh, the pack that, that I bought came with a light charcoal, which, um, I just found that I ended up just skipping right ahead to the medium and dark. Um, trusty blending stump. I got this two-sided one so I can use uh, this light side for some of the white areas, the dark side for some of the charcoal. Although I don't know how much I'm gonna actually be using it for this drawing because I really wanna have like these sharp edges that convey that texture. Uh, and, and for my erasers, I've got these three. I've got my kneaded eraser. I'll use this mono, um, uh, it's got a rubber and it's kind of a sanded side. I'm gonna try that out. It's been a while since I've really used it. And then I'm gonna use this, uh, this eraser here, this retractable one that I've kind of shaved off uh, in this end to give myself this chiseled edge and that's going to help with some of the highlights as well especially in the texture in the fur. So um, before I get started again I want to shout out to everybody. I love seeing where you're viewing from because we get people from all over the world. I see Brazil uh, and we have Manitoba, um, people from England. This is awesome. So welcome everybody. Uh, this is my favorite uh, time of the week. I love these Wednesdays. So I really appreciate everybody joining today. Um, let's see. And if you do have any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, add them to the discussion thread. If you type them in all caps, I'll be more likely to see them. Um, and if I happen to skip over it uh, and, and you really want me to answer, please, please ask it again um, because sometimes I just miss things and, and I don't want to feel like I'm ignoring you. I don't, I generally don't ignore anybody on here. So um, let's see. Oh, and as you're going along, like I said, if you're using different materials or if you have a different approach to it, I love to hear how you do it and see how I can kind of incorporate it into my work. So let's get started. Um, let's see, I got to bring up the full size image here. So I've got the chat up here. I've got the full size image on a big screen here off to my left. Um, I also have the small one in front of me and both of those are going to help. Um, the first thing I want to do actually is just kind of orient myself. And so I want to give myself kind of a, a sense, a general sense of where the, the middle of the page is um, and then find that in the reference image. Uh, and then and see if that helps me to um, kind of start to block in the forms. So using this vine charcoal, I'm just doing, you know, I'm just breaking down the, the dog into this uh, kind of simple set of, 
uh, kind of loose straight lines. And the idea is that we're just getting information on the page quickly. And then once we have it on there, we can start to make some adjustments. Um, it's difficult to accurately um, capture correct proportions right out of the gate. Sometimes, it's, like I said, it's just helpful to get something on the page and then you can make decisions that are very specific and say, I need to move this up or down and make it bigger or smaller um, rather than trying to work that all out in your head and then execute it. Um, so I'm just kind of reacting to reacting to the, the kind of the, the basic proportions as I go. Um, and you now as I, as I kind of scan over the image, I'm also trying to anticipate how the whole drawing process is going to turn out. Where am I going to have trouble? Um, and what can I do in these early stages to set me up for success later on? And one of the things that's really standing out at this early stage is there are a few areas where uh, it gets really soft in those edges, like right up here in the upper part of the ear. Um, that's going to get a little tricky. We come around here to the top of the head and that becomes a harder edge. And as we move down along that edge, it softens a bit and then it gets harder again around the nose, softens a bit under here, and then it gets really soft under here again. So I just want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and what I might do is as I, as I predict that those areas that are going to be challenging, I'm going to let those stay fairly loose for now. I'm going to work my way from either side up to find those edges where I have a harder edge, I can really start to define that with a line a little bit more. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I go through it. Um, the other thing that really kind of stood out is um, when I was doing the preparatory sketch was the, uh, again, the, the concept of texture. And it got me thinking about, well, how, how can I just kind of describe what I'm doing there? Um, and the thing that really stood out is the idea that texture can follow the form and reinforce the form of the subject. And so that's what we're going to be focusing a lot on today. Um, the other thing that I really want to make sure that I establish properly is the sense of light and shadow. So most of the dog is actually backlit. He's in shadow, but being a very light um, colored fur, um, it's really easy to, to think about going right to white. So what I want to do is actually I want to block in the shadow shape. And I'm using an overhand grip, using the side of the charcoal as much as possible because I don't want, you know, big lines. And, and a lot of this is, is, is easily removable. And so I'm not thinking about this as being any sort of um, a permanent mark. This is all uh, very temporary and I know it's going to go away. This is really more for the benefit of my, my brain than anything. And because it's giving me an initial pass at some of those proportions, so the next time I go through and, and help kind of manage the proportions, I'll get a little bit better at it. And then I'll go through it again, and I'll get a little bit better at it even again. Um, and so there's the sense that I'm just you just kind of going through it the first time and but it's it's not permanent this is really just kind of scanning the the form and reacting to these things um, and as I go through the, a lot of the decisions I'm making are kind of snap judgments you know so as I'm working on the ear for example I do quick check-ins with where that is relative to other um, parts of the dog. Um, you know, so looking at, you know, as the ear starts to become established, I can compare that to uh, its, its mouth here and carry a line across here, a horizontal guide there to, to give myself kind of some uh, point of reference. And it's just moving around the subject very quickly because as I, if I settle down, then my brain will start to fixate on <laughs> the, the details and I can't do that. So part of it is really just a strategy to help me manage the, my natural instincts. Oops, I dropped a little spittle there on the page. I'll leave a permanent mark, that's all right. Um, 
And, and one of the nice things about working on this toned paper is that I can build the light in on top of that. I do think I want to go a little bit darker in that background though. Um, and with the vine charcoal, I can, um, I can always lighten it up and it'll probably just kind of wipe away at some point, but um, you can see how easily that's removed. But I think having some ver uh, variety in that background is going to be really helpful. Um, And so right up here where I know those edges are going to be soft, I'm just being really kind of gentle in these areas. So I'm trying to start to think early on about those lost and found edges. Okay. All right. How do we, how do I feel about things as they stand now? I do want to, this is kind of a focal point here, this, ridge along this top edge and so I do want to get get that established properly and one of the things I'm seeing now is I have the eye I have the mouth and I have kind of this section of the, the, the eye that's hidden around that that curve I start to have them being formed and I can see that right now if I drop a plumb line down under here this this is too close to that they're too close to one another in that that plumb line so I need to bring this over a little bit more. And I find it easier to work in um, kind of short straight marks to establish a curve um, rather than um, trying to draw a curve of that of this mouth, for example. You know, it, it's easy to think about it as a curve like this, but if we do that, then it'll ultimately feel most likely like incorrect. It'll feel like it's too rounded of a curve. So if I break it down into a sequence of kind of short straight marks and then gradually round it out, um, it'll feel more accurate. Um, one of the other things I'm doing is thinking about the negative space as I'm working. Um, so the shape here that's formed in the background. Um, just checking to see if there's any questions. Um, let's see, Cheryl, looks like, like uh, so just so you know that, so these episodes I try to get up posted about a week in advance. And so actually this is one for next week, this iceberg. So I'll get that posted this afternoon where I'll list the materials that we're doing. And that'll be on both on the YouTube channel as well as the, art, the Drawing Together page on Artist Network. So I, I try to get everything up in advance so you get a sense of the, uh, the materials needed and you'll have the reference image as well. So if anybody wants to work ahead, you should be able to do that. I, like I said, this afternoon I should be able to get that posted for you. Um, all right, so now what I need to do, I, I want to get some sort of indication over here where the, the back of the dog works. Um, and so I'm going to use this measurement here and compare that and so I'll do some comparative measuring on the reference photo. Um, and that puts me almost to the edge of the ear. I do a horizontal guide across here to see where it's, his shoulder kind of aligns with the mouth. Um, let's see. Okay, I feel like that's that's given me some orientation points. So, like uh, as you can see, my hands already building up with charcoal. So I know this is all going to get wiped down. The vine charcoal is really not a a very permanent medium. So I don't want to be I don't want to be trusting that any of these marks are going to stay. I feel like I have a better sense of where things go now. So I'm going to switch to um, this medium charcoal. Um, let's see for. Before I move on though, this does go up as a recording, uh, Paul is asking, so once this is done, it goes up on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find all of them, we're on 72, I think at this point, so you can find all of them in a playlist or you can go to the Artist Network page and you can find them all there by subject. Um, how did you get the thumbnail if you haven't drawn it yet? Um, I know I do. So if you are joining, um, I do a preparatory drawing. So this is the one that I've done. This is what the one you see in the thumbnail. Um, and that helps me to kind of think through the, the subject and give myself some sort of guide um, in terms of describing what this whole thing is about. Um, and it gives me a little bit of confidence 
uh, because it is a little little terrifying drawing live. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, we've all had those experience where we we move into a drawing with these grand intentions, and then it kind of takes a life of its own. And so um, it helps me to kind of manage some of my anxiety around that a little bit. Um, so I am working now again with a medium charcoal, and I'm. Uh, gonna just really focus on the darks. I'll bring the lights in a little bit later. So i have using the side of the pencil I really like this overhand grip because you can get these fine lines if you need it um, But it also discourages kind of a fixation on uh, detail And then what I'm what I'm ultimately targeting right now as I do this are areas where the edges are a little bit um, a little bit sharper. Again, if we talk about lost and found edges, um, then I could see along this, the top ridge here, they become a little bit um, stronger, sharper. We lose an edge here a little bit in that fur. Um, and then as I, if I were to kind of start to build in some value as I lay those lines down, I'm actually going to pull up and into that background and darken that up a little bit. And these, uh, this charcoal pencil leaves a more permanent mark. This is a compressed charcoal, so. And I don't know how much I'm going to really try to match one-to-one -one the the values in the image here in the in the reference photo um, so i'm actually going to try to go a little bit darker back in here now one of the things i'm noticing you know this we, we we've worked on this paper quite a bit before but it's not specifically di designed for charcoal so it, it does you can hear it kind of slipping across the page a little bit but i'll keep working on it so what i'm doing is trying to be really gentle with this charcoal Um, because I, in, in building up lots of light layers rather than trying to lay in value in one pass. And I come back to that section again. I'm kind of fixating on that, uh, that top edge. And then we kind of lose the edge here against that background. So. And as I'm working, I'm, I'm trying to remind myself to, to roll the pencil in my fingers so that I'm, I'm not creating any kind of flat spots on the, the charcoal. And I really, I need to stop, I need to stop drawing or like smudging with my fingers. <laughs> I've, warned, I've warned everybody about that and it's something I, I keep doing again. So I'm just going to hold this paper towel in my hand and hopefully remind, that will help me to remind myself to stop blending with my fingers. All right, so now I'm making a, an additional pass through the drawing and I'm gonna gradually kind of refine this. Uh, kind of squinting my eyes to prioritize value relationships and try to see the shadow shapes. Now, one of the things that, uh, I did it again. One of the things that uh, I, you know, I notice in looking at the reference photo is this kind of soft transition up in here. So I, I'm gonna try to do my best to work from the center of the form up to that edge rather from that rather than from the edge down and that's going to help me to create a, a, a better transition there because what can happen is is if i start up here it's it's easy for me to make that mark harder and darker and diff, more difficult to erase later on so um If I start from the center of the form and build my way up, I can kind of gradually kind of lift it off there. So as I can think about that the same way here with this, this portion of the head as we move up to the top of the head, it's that soft transition. So I'll start by kind of blocking in some of these values from that center of the form and then gradually lift up as I move into it to create that soft edge. 
Uh, woo, caught myself there. Um, and a lot of this stuff, I may end up actually um, lifting up a lot of this charcoal, but it's helping me to see the shadow shapes a little bit better at this, at this page. Uh, Daniel is asking what sharpener I use to get a fine point. I use, um, this is just a, a razor blade. So I've, I've hand sharpened this with a razor blade. Um, but I do have other sharpeners um, that I use, but I, I prefer to use a, a, just use a razor blade. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons I like this overhand grip is that it's, it's always keeping that tip sharp. So when I really need that fine detail, I can, I can access it. But for most of the early stage here, I don't need that detail. I give myself an indication here, this, this mouth. That's, this, that was a really tricky spot to work on in the, in the preparatory one. So what I first wanna do is make sure that I have the basic scale correct. So at this point now I've got, when I'm looking up, I can see what you're seeing. I see the same screen. Um, so it has the overhead projection and the reference image next to one another. And this is helping me to uh, adjust the proportion. So if, um, if you're working, it might be helpful to actually put things vertically. If you can actually put your drawing next to the screen, for example, it, you might be able to compare proportions one-to-one -one a little bit more effectively. And then right in here, we're gonna get that, that highlight and that, that, black, that backlight there. So I'll work in the background. So in terms of keeping the pencil sharp, if I ever do need to kind of resharpen the pencil, I can work on an area like this using this overhand grip. And if I roll the pencil in my fingers um, as I go, that'll gradually sharpen the pencil. And I'm just gonna make that transition pretty soft right there. Okay, where am I at right now? Okay, so I, there is this kind of dark spot at the top of the ear. And what I'm doing now is I'm gonna kind of create this kind of triangulation between the eye, this side of the mouth, and uh, in that part of the ear. So I realized that I need to make some adjustments in here too. Um, I'm gonna draw, try to drop that eye in. And as I'm looking at that scale, I, I'm doing a check-in with other, other aspects of the, uh, the features. So for example, I'm using the nose as the guide to figure out how far down that eye needs to be placed. As I move over to the nose, I realize that it's not really locked in and so then I move over to the nose and kind of lock that down so um, in my mind I'm still actually working on the eye I just need to get the nose kind of locked in so that I can get back to placing the eye properly if that makes sense and again I'm now what I'm trying to do is I as I look at this I'm trying to observe the specific shape. Um, and again, breaking it down into a sequence of shorter, straighter marks. And I, I, I'm gonna try not to use an outline as much as possible. Try to find an angle here, break this bottom edge into a sequence of angles. And then along this edge here. And that's gonna to help to give it some structure um, because then ultimately what's creating that shape is the structure around the eye. It's not the eye itself. It's this curve here as, as the, uh, that upper eyelid kind of floats over the eyeball. Um, it's this part of the eye socket. It's this part here kind of on the cheekbone under the eye that's flat. Um, and then the snout that kind of works up to that eye. They all have different angles and planes that, it, that kind of 
congregate at that one spot. Their their kind of confluence is right there at the eye. So, um, let's see. Cheryl's saying you're gonna incorporate colored pencils. Go for it. That sounds awesome. Um, colored pencils are rather challenging. All right. So now I'm feeling better about this. Let's see. I've got the eye. The eye feels like it's too far this way. And, but I also feel like this is not quite the right shape. I feel like I need to come over a little bit more with this. So I'm going to actually move over to the snout. I mean, the, uh, the mouth here. Adjust that a little bit. And then reevaluate. So if I drop a plumb line here, how does that align with the eye? So this, if, let's see, do an angle. Okay, so this portion of the mouth, if I'm happy with this placement, if I draw a vertical line up, a plumb line, you can see that right now it's bisecting the eye. When I look at the reference photo, this line here, this plumb line, should be aligned with this portion of the eye. That means I need to move this eye over. Um, and I'm just going to kind of tap this up. I don't want to remove that altogether because I want to see the old, I want to see that old shape so that I don't end up accidentally placing the, the eye in the same spot again. And then shift that eye over. And now we have kind of two, um, two points of that, that triangle established, the eye, the mouth here, and I'm gonna look for that dark spot. Um, on, under the ear here at the top of the ear and it's at a slight angle from the eye and so I'm doing some angle sighting just aligning the eye with this part that, that dark spot under the ear against the reference photo comparing it to this so looking for that angle and now I'll do the same from kind of this point here on the mouth this way So, um, and that gives me this kind of rough spot here. And if I squint my eyes, it helps me to see that, that overall shape and value. And so for me, you know, drawing is, it's ultimately, it's a problem to solve. And I love that, you know, so I'm using the drawing process to better understand the subject. The better I understand the subject, the, the stronger the drawing is going to be. And that's kind of my thinking. And so I see this kind of darker patch right up in here. So I'm going to lay in some value here. And so we're actually flying along pretty well, like, um, one of the things, if, again, if you're new, you, you will not have heard me say this, but one of the things that I like to think about when I'm drawing is the idea that um, at any point, really, you could kind of stop and, and recognize the subject. So building the whole thing up at once rather than kind of drawing in an outline and then finishing as we go, if that makes sense. Uh, Coca Burger saying I should reveal the tongue. Yes, I, I, yeah, I think that's a, that is a good suggestion. Um, my first objective, though, is to make sure I get the basics place and scale correct. Um, and that is, that's one of those finer details that, um, that I can bring in later, and it's not going to really ultimately um, affect our understanding of the dog at this point. You know, so we can look at this and understand it to be the dog. Um, and... I just want to, before I kind of get in there and start to draw in some of those details, I want to make sure that I'm working in the right spot. So um, I think what I do need to do is kind of establish this lower jaw. Um, and, it's, and in particular, its placement relative to the nose. And actually, I'm going to do an angle sighting against the eye. So what I'm looking at is this angle here. So I'm kind of creating this kind of triangular form. 
And if I get this angle right and I drop this line down here from the, from the right side of that nose, that should lead me right to where that bottom jaw, that lower jaw should be. And then there's a basic line here. So I'm looking for these basic forms first. And in that way, we'll kind of gradually refine it. Okay. <laughs> mad moments go saying the start of a drawing is always barking mad. That's true. And don't forget the ugly duckling stage. Um, again, that's if you're kind of new, that's a term that we use here, um, which is, uh, you know, the idea that as we're drawing, you know, drawing can be a bit of a struggle. You got to I kind of work through these issues and try things out, see what works, see what, you know, see what's not working. Um, and there's going to be an ugly duckling stage. There's going to be a stage that you're going to go through where you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is going to come together. Um, but if you keep working, you know, something will come out of it. Um, that's, that's my philosophy at least. And I've heard from many of you that that's kind of been true as well. And then sometimes you realize that a drawing is just gone. Like you, there's, it's really no amount of work is ultimately going to give you the result that you want. Um, but there's still always something valuable in that experience. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for that line of that collar. And in, in a similar approach, I'm thinking about that central um, axis to it, starting there and then working my way up um, to create kind of a softer edge. And then, and I'm not... I'm not going to take the time to really figure out how that fur kind of overlaps that part yet. I'm going to be getting to that point later. At this point, this is really about getting this dark spot, dark spot in there, so that it, um, so I kind of have an orientation point. Okay. I should, I should draw, draw Santa Claus. Um, mad moments go is suggesting. Um, let's see. All right. So what I want to do now? What do I want to do? I think what I want to do is I want to. This line is starting to bug me, so I'm just kind of softening that, and I'm going to use my eraser to kind of reestablish that. This is ultimately going to be defined using the white, um, the white charcoal. So I'm kind of using the eraser as a way to map out where that white charcoal is going to be. So I'm going to redraw that. Uh, doing some subtractive drawing with the eraser. Um, and then by getting rid of the outline, it should help me to get more form and volume out of that. Um, it's going to help me to create a sense of it being rounded as we move across the top. It'll be a sharp edge because it's going to be light against that background. And this is a way for me to start to think through the structure of the dog a little bit. So like right in here, you really get a sense for that plane that moves between the two eyes, the kind of the bridge of the nose there. Um, and there's some really subtle value variations in there and it's kind of a lost edge. So what I'm doing, what I erased here is kind of that central path between the eyes rather than the outer edge. And as we come down here, then this becomes that, that ridge of the nose. So this path kind of falls across there, but then I know I'm going to be building more of that other eye on this side. All right. And so I can start to also going to refine this shape. A lot of that is that vine charcoal, which is pretty light at this point. So, um, and I'm intentionally kind of bouncing around all over because I don't want to get too fixated on a particular area. I just know. Um, it's in my particular way of working, if I get to the point of finish too early, I get myself into trouble a lot. I end up drawing one thing too large or too small. I lose control over the proportions. And so I'm trying to really control that and be mindful of 
um, of uh, you know getting stuck in one spot too early. So I'm just looking at now kind of the shape of the lights and kind of erasing out those areas and it's helping me to see the form of the dog a little bit more. I can start to really see how this is going to start to come to life later on. So as I'm working with the eraser, it's, there's a lot of kind of rocking, pushing and pulling. I'm thinking about it more like I use a brush. Um, so when I'm painting, I'm not making distinct brush marks. It's scrubbing and pushing and pulling and twisting. And that's the role that the eraser is kind of playing right now. All right. How's everybody doing? <sighs> Let's see. Oh, welcome to, from Greece. Saying <laughs> sounds like it's pretty late over there. If you do have to go to go to bed, it'll come up again later. So in Scotland, awesome, very cool. All right, what do I need to do here? I think what I want to do is I want to leave this be for now. Uh, I don't cross that top of the head, the, the nose, but I'm going to work my way essentially from left to right because I'm feeling pretty good about the basic proportions. Does everybody generally agree? Feel like yeah, there's I do feel like there's still something off about the eye placement. Maybe I think what it is is it's a little the eye is a little high, is it? That doesn't feel I don't know. It's hard to hard to tell. But if anybody happens to see something about the basic proportions, what we're looking at are these dark spots here, and I'm almost it's almost like a constellation. If I get those right, those become my anchor points, and then I can kind of fill in the the spaces in between. Um, so if um, if anybody sees something off, I'd love to hear it. And otherwise, you know, and if I get those, I can start to really kind of finish the drawing and I can start to add some of those details. Um, Adele is saying the angle of the nose is off. Is it too angled? It, yeah, it is too angled, isn't it? Kind of lost it. This is um, this is one of those those things where because I'm looking at this at an angle, and I didn't when I erased that down, I wasn't checking in with um, with things. I kind of just looked at an angle and I, I erased out what I thought was correct, and I didn't double check it against the the um, the the the, per, the vertical um, drawing in front of me, the vertical projection. And yeah, and the Saif is saying the ear. Um, if you have more information, that would be helpful. But I'll, I'll kind of go through there and double check that. Um, Let's see, okay. Somebody watching from Turkey. The eye does look high, Gail is saying. So let me double check that. Yeah, it does seem a little bit high. What I need to do is actually, I wanna, Adele was saying something about, about this angle of the snout. And so let me get that kind of locked down. I'm going to finish that and I'm going to put a, a kind of a, a post-it note there in my mind to come back and look at that eye um, because what I need to do is really get that locked in relative to the nose. Okay, so as I'm working on this, I'm going to still use this overhand grip and there's a slight turn. So it's not a complete profile of the dog. He's kind of slightly turned. So we can kind of see across that, that snout a little bit. And you can kind of see across this plane here. So that's what I want to try to capture. There's light coming in from the top and it's shaded underneath. Um, and so as I go through, I'm going to do a fairly light pass at this. 
and then I'll come back in and make it even darker in those certain areas. So now what I'm going to do is, is kind of sharpen up that edge. And I think what I need to do is erase this out here. Do some negative drawing. And, and I need to try to, it's, it's really difficult to see the subtleties in this area. So I'm doing my best to try to observe really the, these subtle shifts in value in here. This is still the medium, ooh, let me just put this aside here. This is still the, the medium uh, charcoal here. So I know I can go even darker with the, uh, the dark charcoal a little bit later. Faces turn to the right too much, Claude is saying. And the, um, the mouth might be too far forward. Yeah, they, I think I do need to adjust things as I go a little bit. So um, what I want to do here, yeah, is try to get this perspective of this, the snout kind of locked in. So I'm kind of looking for this average value um, in here, and then I'm going to come back in with some of the darker spots. I'm going to come in there with the using the uh, uh, using the darker uh, graph or darker charcoal. I'm sorry to do that. So we're starting to get the turn of the nose. Um, and now as I, I do need to adjust this, I think I need to bring this part of the mouth in a little bit. So this kind of goes into what I was saying earlier about not wanting to get into too many of those details because uh, until I'm really locked that down there, that turns a little bit better. Um, and it is going to be, this area is going to be really critical, I think, in terms of capturing that turn to the head, um, because you can see the teeth, the canine teeth, um, they, that's, those are kind of parallel to one another. And so they start to actually create kind of a line of perspective that we can use to orient ourselves. Um, and so I do want to get that right, but um, not quite there yet, I don't think. Bringing out the blending stump. And let's see. So as I'm doing that, I'm, you know, I'm kind of smoothing things out, but I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to start to think through the structure of the dog. So I'm, what I'm looking at is the direction that the fur is falling, and I'm trying to use marks that align with that. So as I'm you know, wrapping around the snout, for example. And I like using this overhand grip. So I'm using the side of the, of the, the uh, blending stump, just like in a, like a piece of charcoal. Ooh, so I just rolled and caught a piece there that, um, or the charcoal had built up a little bit more. And I'm trying to see that the kind of volume now, that kind of the turn as we go up the snout and then across the, the snout. So going up in this direction here and then making that turn back. And part of this too, I'm kind of anticipating what's going to come to life once I, um, uh, once I drop in that some of that white in there as well. All right, let's see. 
see here. So how's everybody doing? Um, uh, so let's see, WH drawing is saying I'd make the nose a little bit longer. Yeah, I, that, I can see that as well. What, I, what I'm seeing in here is something that's a little bit off. Let's see, am I happy with that part? And so I'm going to kind of look at the basic uh, scale relationships. I'm going from the snout to the eye, the eye to the ear. And it's basically a one-to-one. -one. So if I take this measurement here from the tip of the nose to this portion of the eye, that should lead me from the tip of the eye to that dark spot of the ear. So let's see where I'm at. So that's a little bit, a little bit, little bit longer. So let me take that measurement, go like this, and what that tells me is that the the nose should actually be out this far over here. So that was a good observation there, and it's a very subtle. You know, we moved it what like an eighth of an inch, <laughs> you know, but it can make a big difference in how we interpret the the subject here. So good call. How's that angle look? I feel like this needs to come up just a little bit more. There we go. That feels a little bit better. And then at some point, I have to kind of move the drawing along, so I may end up having to kind of call the proportions good as they are for now, so that I can kind of get into some of that texture. Um, And then Gail Claypool will make the angle of the bridge of the nose slanted just a little downward. You see, this is going to have to be, I'm going to refine this edge a little bit. And right in here, right in here, I feel like that's where it can change. All right. Michelle is saying, I realize I cannot draw and watch at the same time. Yeah, that can be, that can be tricky. Um, all right, what am I doing here? Just trying to think through things. So I think I'm feeling more confident in the proportions. Um, actually, let me compare this measurement. That's gonna be kind of my base unit from the tip of the nose to the tip of the eye on the left. That's exactly one-to-one -one with the length of the, the mouth there. So if I take that measurement there, look how far that's off. So there's, that's, that's a problem right there. Um, now, I'm feeling good about this portion here. I feel like that's placed generally properly. So let me take that measure across here. That means this, portion of the mouth needs to come way over and do some angle sighting right there. Let's see. Now, now I'm going to measure the height of that mouth in the back. So that should be about this high. That's got to come way down here too. So there is something way off on the mouth. So what I love about charcoal is that you can continually adjust and just move that charcoal around. All right. So I think that that feels a bit better. Um, okay, that's 
thinking through some of these areas here. So once we get into the, the fur, that's going to be a lot of fun. And you can kind of be kind of more free with your mark making and less uh, kind of beholden to the reference photo. But again, that's something that we talk about a lot in this series is that it, that's part of an artistic decision for you is, is how much do you need it to really align with the photo or how much is a photo just a jumping off point for your, your drawing. Um, You know, you know, for me, it, it, it all comes down to, you know, as it what's playing out on the page and is it a distraction if it's off or can it, you know, is it not? So. Um, kind of again, leaving this whole area a little obscure for now, a little, little loose. And then we'll come back in later and, and kind of adjust further. I'm just trying to right now at this point kind of do, do some quick gestural marks to help give my sense, myself a sense of how that fur changes in flow and direction. You know, it, as you move through, you can see these almost distinct bands of how that fur changes from here to here. And we get above the collar and you get these kind of distinct blocks. And then it gets shorter and smoother as you come out of that. And uh, yeah, there's, that's what makes this subject really cool. These goldens are pretty awesome. All right, let's see. So welcome everybody if you're new. Um, uh, Cheryl saying you found your own subject and just started, that's awesome. So I'd love to see, you know, how, if you're drawing along, how are, how is it going for you? Are you following along this drawing? Are you doing your own thing? Kind of interpreting it yourself? Uh-oh. My computer got unplugged. I'll be right back because it is about to die. <laughs> that would be bad. It's the joys of going live. So, all right, now we're, we're back. I was about 1% there, so <laughs> that would have been a fun one. Um, let's see. I got too much stuff in my hands now. Feeling better about the proportion. So now I'm going to go back in and start to kind of define things a little bit more. So I've got the dark, um, I've got the dark charcoal here, again, using the side of the pencil. Um, I don't need the, the fine point. I find that using the side of the pencil um, is ultimately more effective in um, suggesting texture than using the point. Um, and so that's what I want to kind of talk about in, in this uh, in this demo here is things that I've, I think about as I'm as I'm thinking about texture. And for me, it, it, it ultimately, it's about suggesting things a bit more than making them explicit, if that makes sense. So um, I've got this, uh, I've got this bar here on the bottom of the table that helps to lift my, my arm up. And that's giving me a little bit of support here. Um, I'm trying not to rest my hand on the page too much. Um, let's see, just checking to see, uh, WH drawing, let's be honest, most of us are criticizing the proportions, but we, we would all probably be finished with the drawing at this point. Well, I think that's an interesting point. You know, I don't, um, I, I hope it doesn't feel like people are criticizing much. I mean, or the word criticism is, is a tricky word, is loaded. Um, I find these comments helpful and I kind of welcome them, but everybody's different. And so if you are offering kind of thoughts and suggestions, it can be helpful to think about, you know, how that's landing with whoever you're offering those suggestions to. Um, so I, that's part of this show is to kind of draw together and share some of these observations. And there's been a lot of times when you all have helped me through some tricky spots where I just wasn't seeing the proportions correctly. And in part because it's, I'm, I'm talking as I'm going and drawing live and there's a lot going on and I can use that as an excuse, but that's also just what drawing is. I mean, it, it never goes exactly the way you want it. And that's what I love about it. Um, you know, there's a sense of surprise every time I draw. Um, 
and I like to kind of always be thinking too about like kind of discovering the materials in a new way. That's what, that makes it fun. So um, I welcome those those thoughts. But again, it's, if it can be helpful to kind of read your audience if you're if you're offering suggestions. So um, giving myself a little bit of a note there on the end of the nose. It's really, gosh, this is really tricky to see here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing around with the nose a little bit to, to see what works. Is I can't really see what's happening in the reference photo. Um, it's so dark in there, and so I, um, I'm kind of experimenting a little bit to see how it, how each of these marks lands. And so when I'm doing a lot of texture with hair and fur, you can see how I'm holding the pencil. I don't even know. There's no, some sort of modified overhand grip. So I've talked about it before. I'll do a, a grip like this to help use the side of the pencil. But for this texture here, I'm actually using this grip. So it's kind of wedged underneath my pinky and my thumb, and I'm holding it with these, uh, these fingers here, stabilizing it. And that allows me to kind of float over the page a little bit more and then drop it down when I need to. Um, so that's... It's just kind of how I'm holding the pencil. Um, so as I'm working in some of these dark spots in the eye, again, I'm looking at the center of the form and I'll work my way out. And what I'm trying to observe is, is how, um, you know, as the dark and the light kind of interact, what is, what is happening at that edge? What are the direction of the marks that I'm seeing? Because especially around the eye, they change quite a bit. And this is where I, can, um, I kind of wish I could rotate the paper a little bit, but I can't. <laughs> so as I'm working at the lower part of the eye, um, I'm kind of pushing down because they, they kind of curve underneath here. So I can, I can kind of drag down or I can, I can push down so I can get above it and push. And I think it's, I kind of, I need to kind of experiment to see what's working. Um, and I need to also remind myself to be careful not to create perfectly spaced and even marks. Um, and there's a natural tendency to want to do that. And it just I'm just using the weight of the pencil as I do this. Um, but now I'm looking at some of these darker spots. And using this overhand grip, I'm kind of following, trying to just follow along the um, the grain of the, the fur here, you know, so as I look from this transition here, they're essentially coming down vertically here. And as we move up, then they start to become almost horizontal or, you know, over a 45 degree angle. So I'm trying to visualize where I'm starting and where I need to end. Um, and so I'm trying to be mindful of that and then um, kind of work as a transition up to that spot. Um, and the, the marks that I'm making when drawing the fur are kind of like this rocking motion and that creates soft and kind of fine edges at the end of each mark. Um, and uh, I find that that ultimately conveys a sense of that texture a little bit better than switching to this tripod grip where I'm making very distinct lines. Those are often heavier on the ends than in the middle. And I think that the, the, the texture I feel it can, conveys a little bit more effectively creating this kind of rocked mark. So it's kind of lifting and landing on the page. It's weird idea. I just cut kind of a rough spot on that charcoal that uh, started scratching the paper a little bit. Gail is saying, yes, also working flat on a lowered surface like this is a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, I, I like, typically I like to work vertically, and especially when I paint, I do that as well. And, um, and for the purposes of this, it's hard to get the camera in at a vertical angle. So that's something to keep in mind. That's a good point. If you're working and you're struggling with proportions, working vertically may be the way to get you out of that. 
Uh, the other thing I, I have to kind of remind myself is that I'll be bringing in the lights in again later. I can feel my mind starting to calibrate to this paper and seeing these light areas as white, as the, as the whitest white, and I know I can get a lot whiter than that. Um, and I need to kind of start to be a little bit predictive in that. Some of these marks are a little bit heavy, so I'm going to lift those off. Let's see, I don't really care for that. This dark is too dark, so I'm gonna to switch to the, the medium. It's a little bit harder and finer, a little bit lighter marks. So I'm mostly kind of, what I'm doing is, is as I'm, I'm kind of dragging down into that dark spot, trying to land gently on the page with each stroke, um, again, to kind of create a, just kind of a finer mark, and I'm rolling the pencil in my fingers as I go so I've always got a new kind of rounded spot of that, that pencil tip that, that can be engaged. Um, now let's look actually at those little dark spots on those whiskers. I'm gonna drop some of those in. I'm not gonna be too persnickety with those, I just wanna suggest them. And then when I come back in with the white charcoal, that's going to really help to bring this into life. So I'm looking for areas of kind of light and shadow at this point. And kind of, kind of come back up in here. And again, I don't want to, I'm intentionally kind of moving around the drawing so I don't kind of fixate on one area too much. Um, because then I, what happens is that I can kind of come back to the eye and I have kind of fresh, fresh perspective on that. Um, and I can maybe be able to catch things that are a little bit off a little bit more effectively than if I were to st stick with one spot too much. And here, as I look in these darker spots in the ear, again, I'm trying to be mindful of the, the marks that I'm making because I, you know, I want them to feel like naturally formed fur. Um, so I'm thinking more about direction and then again the kind of soft landings on the page and kind of capturing the overall flow rather than drawing individual strands of fur. And you know, one of the things that I kind of observed in some um, students who are kind of new to drawing is that there's a tendency to want to kind of get through the texture quickly um, and kind of draw a handful of marks. But I feel like the more you work it, the the better. Kind of if you and if you find yourself being a little impatient, this could be a good opportunity to kind of force yourself to stick with it a little bit longer. All right, so I'm looking at now kind of some of the. Uh, Kind of the, the lighter areas where I might come back in with some of the white charcoal later. And so as I'm using the eraser, I want to be thinking the same way as though I'm when I'm using the charcoal. Soft landings and takeoffs, so thin marks here. Um, uh, WA Strong is saying putting your, your work in, uh, holding it up to a mirror is really helpful exactly. Those are all, the, the term we use here is to change the context of the drawing. That's what I like to use. And so you can do that in a number of ways. You can a mirror is a great one to do that. Um, the uh, you know looking at it from a distance, taking a photo, looking at the thumbnail, uh, flipping it upside down. Those are all ways that you're changing your relationship to the drawing, to the subject, so you see it uh, kind of with fresh eyes. Um, and uh, I think it's all really helpful. So thank you for sharing that. Margaret, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Gail is saying the top of ear is too high and not slanted. Yes, I, I have to, there's gonna be a lot going on up in here um, that once I, once I start to get that white in there. So it, it's not reading quite properly at this point. And that mark got a little dark right in there. Uh, 
Um, so let's see, where am I at right now? So I want to kind of think about this. So again, as I'm using the eraser, um, I'm thinking about the flow and general shape, just kind of lifting off the page here. And if I use a light touch, it'll kind of leave a finer line. I have, I do have this that'll create a fine line, but I want to bring that in a little bit later. Everything's going to get smudged as we, as we work. So this is kind of thinking about big forms at this point. Um, and so if I can try to find these larger patches of kind of lighter in the area. So there's kind of bounce light happening in this side. Remember, this is all in shadow in here. So this is all bounce light that we're seeing when we look at these variations of value. So I'm trying to find these larger areas, but again, really trying to make sure that these marks follow along the flow that's been established by the, the way the, you know, the fur lays across the head. So what we're doing is we're using those the, the direction of the marks to follow the contour, draw the form of the um, of the object in this case, the object's the dog. Um, and so that's a, kind of an important way to use uh, use texture is to reinforce the form. I've sometimes seen um, artists that will tend to kind of layer basically a flat layer of texture across the form, and then it just kind of flattens things out, kind of treats all the texture the same way. Um, so I, you want to kind of look for the planes of the, the, the object and how that texture kind of reinforces those, those marks. So. All right. Again, I just want to keep moving around, kind of strike, and then move on to another object so we don't get fixated. And if I don't get it right, I'll come back around and hopefully correct it again a little bit later. So. And who knows, this whole drawing could just fall apart. <laughs> I could do something to really screw it up, and that, that has happened. Um, that's okay. That's what drawing is. This isn't the only drawing I'll do in my life. And, uh, these are really just exercises to help improve skill. And so in this case, the skill is really ultimately about texture. All right, what am I doing now? Let's see. Um, I think I, maybe what I need to do now is actually start to bring in some of the light. Do I need to do that? Let me actually, let me get this, get the mouth locked in now, at least the dark parts of the mouth. Let's smooth that out a little bit around here. It's kind of that light glow capturing underneath that chin. Um, and then what I want to observe, what do I have here? This, that's the medium. Let me bring out the dark. Actually, okay, I needed this. I'm gonna soften this bottom edge a little bit. Again, thinking about the way the fur falls. This is another dark area. It's really difficult to see what's going on in there. Um, so let me see what happens. Let's see. Kind of thinking I'm not, I'm not working right at the edge. I'm a little bit set in from the, where that edge is going to be. And then as I work up to the edge, I'm thinking about the, again, the direction of the fur. So how things change, you can see how they change direction along this edge. I'm sorry. My head is dipping in the shot. Um, I need to be mindful of that. There's a little bit of a, some kind of highlight in here. It's kind of a bit of a harder, harder edge along in here, but again, there's still, there's uh, some directionality to some of those marks. All right, working way 
sorry, sorry. That was a little bit of, a little bit more focus. <laughs> so, sorry for the silence there. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to observe is this form. There's a little bit of light catching onto that lower lip that I can erase out. I'm gonna sharpen up some of these edges and I'm gonna need that white charcoal to really kind of finish this off. But right now I'm gonna, for now I'm just gonna use the, the it kind of block in those darker shapes. And erase out this tooth. And it's interesting to see to see it on the screen because of the way the light catches. It's. Um, it's a bit more con there's a bit more contrast on the screen than what I'm seeing in, on, on the page. And so I need to keep checking in with that. And that can be true when, uh, you know, drawing from life or, you know, when you're not projecting anything on the, on a screen is that it's part of the thing that you want to check is how does the, how does the contrast hold up? All right. There's his teeth down in there. So I, what I'm trying to do is think about the structure that I can observe. So there is this kind of turn to this. There's a flat portion, you know, largely flat. It's kind of more horizontal and then vertical over here as we make that turn into the shadow. So that's part of what I'm looking at there. All right. Does that work? Anybody else talk to themselves when they're working alone? <laughs> I find I do that sometimes as well. Um, so I just realized that I was, uh, some of these comments I'm kind of making for myself. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it just helps me to organize my thoughts and say, I'm working on this part right now and this kind of give myself a kind of verbal direction to kind of keep myself organized. Uh, Sebastian Calderas, what type of graphite pencils do I use? I like to use the uh, Derwent um, graphic line when I'm working with graphite. And then they make their Onyx pencils that I really enjoy. These are Derwent charcoals that I'm working with. Um, how are we on time? We're an hour and a quarter in, not too bad. Um, oh, there's some comments here I just want to get back to, so I'm kind of giving myself a little bit of break. Um, Maruski, hi, Artist Network. Welcome for your first time. Uh, Cindy is saying it looks like there's some volume issues. I hope it's not too bad of an issue. Um, Uh, let's see. Risky, true. Everybody sees things differently, but it's the end product that tells the story. Um, all right. Back at it. Just need to kind of give myself a bit of a break there. Whew. All right. What do I do now? What do I do? What do I do? Um, Heather is saying, I read an article that said it's bad to learn to draw from photos, that old master techniques are best to learn volume and space better and don't become a human photocopier, your thoughts. Um, I definitely agree. So, I mean, I've taught, I taught drawing at, um, you know, various institutions for years, and I fully believe that drawing from life is the best way to go. Um, and so, but I, I don't agree that it's bad to work from photos. Um, it is bad to 
only work from photos, I think. So um, I, of course, I'm working for photos here. It's the only way to really make it work for everybody. And I found a lot of value in it. But it's, it's, it's helpful to put that value in context. So you're right, when you're observing a three-dimensional object and you're translating that into a, th a two-dimensional space on the surface here, there's so much that happens that's really valuable. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of value you can extract from working from a photograph. So just building up technique, um, allowing yourself to focus on other things other than translating three-dimensional objects onto a two-dimensional surface. Um, so the, uh, you know, I, like I said, I think it's a matter of putting that into proper perspective. And I do agree that, um, you know, like for me at least, simply making a copy of the photo is not a valuable thing. You know, I can, there are other tools that can do that better. Um, drawing in particular, it's, we've, we've talked about it before here in this, um, in this series is, you know, marks are thoughts, you know, so every mark you make on the page starts as a thought. And for me, that is ultimately what is valuable. It's, 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 it's an experience of drawing. Um, and sometimes that experience originates by looking at a, a photo. Sometimes it originates by looking at life. Um, I think working from a color photo is uh, going to be more valuable than working from black and white. But, you know, I, I also think that simply drawing is going to make you better. So don't give yourself a hard time if you're working from a black and white photograph. You're learning something there. Um, and I think I would rather see people draw um, from a photograph than not draw at all because they don't feel like it's, it's as effective. So I do think that, they, again, that, that it is most effective to be working from life. You're going to learn so much from that. Um, but if, uh, you know, if that becomes a, a thing that prevents you from actually drawing, then I would say abandon that thought and just, just draw. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm looking at some of these finer areas and I'm really observing, trying to, trying to observe these locks down in here. And I, I, I'm going to be off with the proportions, I'm sure. What I'm trying to see are the shapes of light and shadow in these areas and the way they interact. So you can see almost kind of a braided quality to some of these forms. So I'm trying to see the, the larger locks rather than the... Um, rather than the, the this individual hairs, but at the same time, I'm using marks that follow along the, uh, the, the flow, the grain of that fur. Because then, it'll, if anything, it'll help me create a more specific texture later. So I'm just looking for some of these darker areas. And as I drop the marks down, I want the marks to be aligned with the direction of the fur in that area. Uh, Aaron is saying, some, I saw someone recommend mechanical pencils. What do you think about that? Um, I, I, it's just not something I personally use. I know, you know, and I see a lot of great work done with mechanical pencils, but it just doesn't work for the way I like to manipulate the pencils. I like, I like to be able to tilt and move and work on the side of the pencil more rather than the tip. Um, and my thinking changes when I'm using a really fine point like that. Um, when I'm using an overhand grip, like I'm writing, I think differently and I, and, um, and I make marks differently and, and the drawing just doesn't quite work out the way I, and I like that too. So, um, I like, I, like I said, I like to push things around and a mechanical pencil doesn't necessarily lend itself to that, that, that type of working kind of lends itself to precision, which can be exciting. And like I said, there are some great artists that, that use it very effectively. I just, it's not the way I prefer to work. So for, you know, if, if you're an artist and you, and it, for you, the process is really about the precision and the kind of the meditative quality of the mark making with a finely sharpened pencil, you know, mechanical pencil is, is great for that because it's always sharp. <laughs> so, um, but again, it kind of goes back to your, your motivation and kind of connecting with what, what works for you. You know, what, um, this whole thing kind of originated um, out of my kind of desire to, um, you know, I had as a as a painter, I go out and paint um, on location a lot. That's primarily what I do. I like to be outside painting landscapes, and I kind of had, you know, when it became more difficult <laughs> to do that, and became 
uh, there are things that became more discouraging from making that happen. And especially as we move into winter now, um, it's harder to get outside. Um, I thought I need to kind of just draw more. And that's what ultimately kind of led to this. Um, going back to Heather's kind of question there is that I, um, you know, I do think drawing from life is the best way to do that. But in terms of generating a uh, an experience for everybody here where we can draw together. It just seemed most appropriate to work from photographs. Love to hear how everybody else feels about that. Um, you know, I think there are, you know, really some, you know, people who take strong stands for or against working from photos. You know, and you can take that to, um, you know, extremes. You know, some people who, you know, will project an image and then, and then fill that in, you know, the, on the page and, um, you know, using all sorts of optical devices and artists have used optical devices for most of history, you know, from camera lucidas to camera obscuras. Um, and, but they have also seen a lot of really amazing work created by artists who have really just honed their skills of observation. And so, All right, I think, what do I need to do now? Let's get, let's get the white charcoal out because I am getting bored working with the dark charcoal. <laughs> so, um, Mark V, I find it amazing that Scott will just be drawing and then blammo, he's got hair drawn around the dog's ear. Um, let me see. Liz is saying your dog is looking great, awesome. Um, the back wallpaper is good for panoramic drawings. Interesting, yeah. Um, Cheryl's saying, I'm drawing with you. You cannot hear me. <laughs> at, least, uh, at least the dog stays still. That's true. Uh, working from a photograph, you don't have to worry about the subject moving. Um, we talked about that before. I think one of the most valuable things you can do when you're learning to draw um, are quick gestures. Uh, and it's so like, for me, the, I think one of the exercises that that um, really pushed my drawing forward was to fill two sketchbooks with very quick gestures. I'm talking five seconds of so going to the mall, going to the airport, going someplace public where people are walking by and trying to capture them in just a, a few seconds. Um, and so I, I highly recommend that. Um, uh, JC is saying, I think there's a difference in drawing from a photo and trying to get a photo or representation. Too many people want exact likeness from a photo in the work. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, um, good thing to consider as well. Okay. So as I have the, um, so I have the white charcoal out, what I'm trying to do is continue to think about the planes. So as I'm working on the snout here, there's that flat, generally a flat plane across that surface. Um, and then it kind of rounds down into the shadow. I'm kind of starting along that central axis here. And I'm trying to kind of have my marks kind of follow along that, that, that central axis. And then I'm going to work up to the edge. And in that way, I can... Um, I can kind of control that edge a little bit better than if I were to create a line and then fill it in. Um, and so I can again look at the direction of the fur as it confronts that edge. And I can kind of push from the center of the marks outward and kind of lifting up, if that makes sense. And it's really the edges that bring dimensionality to a subject. Um, you know, and it's not to say that drawings need to have um, you know, lost and found edges, but if your objective is to go for realism, um, then having variation along those edges really, um, it's, it's really important. So, um, because edges, uh, lines don't exist in nature, they're abstract concepts. Um, really, it's all about edges. So I'm using this overhand grip. Actually, I can kind of draw on some of these 
the finer lines here. And so as I'm looking at like in these longer eyebrows and other whiskers, using the side of the pencil and twisting and rolling as I go, leaning in, like so starting light and then pressing in to create that fine line. And as I'm looking at this kind of backlight here, again, thinking about the direction of that fur, because there's this general path that we're following, but it's created by an accumulation of marks that, that run in the direction of that fur. And so as I'm doing that, I don't need to have, you know, perfect, perfectly capture each mark as, it, as it's displayed in the photo. But I want to kind of get a general sense of what you know, the angle and the direction of each of these marks. So if I'm missing, missing a whisker here and there, that's gonna be okay. All right, again, kind of jumping around because it helps to keep my brain fresh, thinking fresh. So um, let's see. Oh, Greg, good to see you here. As someone who works on architectural subjects, I primarily work from photos, plus I tend to work too slow to work from life. Um, I sometimes wonder if this is detrimental to my work and growth. You know, I, I think in general, it's just like, um, you know, I think you make some really good points there. And I think it's just like any other, um, you know, any other activity that we do, you know, I think adding variety to what you do, um, it just, it kind of reinforces certain things and it helps you to develop certain skill sets that may not necessarily be Kind of your your primary goal. So if your goal, Greg, is to create you know these architectural drawings, you know working from life periodically might be great. You might learn something from that that you can apply to your photo reference work. Um, but again, they're going to have different objectives. But um, you know, so, it's like so much of being an artist is is intentionally challenging in particular ways to develop the specified skills, it's, they're, they're exercises, it's, it's training yourself, right? And so sometimes we do things that just, that aren't really what we need to do. It's like, you know, athletes will lift weights, you know, and unless you're a, a competitive weightlifter, that weightlifting is to develop strength that you apply in, you know, whatever sport you're performing. Um, and so, you know, that, I think about that sometimes when I'm, when I'm working is that, you know, the, Working from photographs is giving me an opportunity to develop certain skills that I can apply to when working from life. And I think, um, and it can make me better at working from life. Also working from life can make me better at working from photos. Um, and then changing up media. So, you know, working in charcoal and graphite and then colored pencil, you know, as we change those things up, it, um, you know, we can learn something from all of those things that we can apply to really where our, our heart is ultimately at. So my heart is really ultimately at landscape painting, being outside. Um, that's where I love it the most, but I do love these because, you know, these drawings, I, they, uh, it, it gives me hand-eye coordination. It, it develops these skills that I can use in the, those moments. So it gets exciting for me. Um, Zephy is asking if I've ever tried to draw with my non-dominant hand. Absolutely, and I think that's a wonderful exercise to do. Um, it, it really changes the, the thinking effective, in an effective way. So, um, Sebastian is saying, first time here, how long have I been drawing? If, are you talking about this, this drawing itself? Um, this is, we've been going on for an hour and a half, so we'll probably go for another 30 minutes. Um, in my career, I've been drawing for over 20 years. Um, Cheryl's saying you love to be with other artists. That's awesome. And it's you're a plein air painter. Awesome. It's just nothing like working outside. So, um, all right. So again, I'm kind of floating around. As I'm working again, I'm still using the side of the pencil for all of this. And so hopefully what that conveys for some of you is that, you know, to, to break that habit of working with this tripod grip, using the pencil and making distinct marks. Um, this is allowing the materials to do some of the work for you um, and start to suggest things. Um, so pressure is really kind of important. You know, I'm just using the weight of the pencil here because I also want to maintain a sense of that light and shadow structure. So I could really lay down some heavy pressure and some harder marks up here 
where that light is strongest. As I move into that shadow, and I've, if I start to lay in some of those lights, I need to make sure that that's not as bright as anything up here. So I need to start to be really kind of mindful of that. Okay, jumping around. Let's move over to this tongue area because I need to do something other than work on fur for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna bring out this sharp eraser. Kind of got this form wrong in here. So one of the things I try to think about too is that this is a different texture. If I'm working on the tongue, it's a very different texture than the fur. So how can I change my marks to kind of reflect that change in texture? So they're just softer, round, more rounded marks. And then if you, if you use your white charcoal in a shadow area like this, if you use light pressure, it can actually kind of blend things in a nice way. And then you can apply a little bit more pressure and you get that bright white. And I just gonna clean off some of that charcoal that I pick up there, so. How does that work? Let's see. I do feel like I need to darken this area a little bit more, kind of refine the negative space around that tooth. That tooth and then the tongue, it kind of falls into shadow up here. How's that read? Oh my God, I got too much. Too many things in my hand right now, so, okay. Actually, I'm not quite done with that. I do wanna kind of work that area a little bit more. Wrong one. And then this is a hard edge that I need to just soften. that work? I guess that works out okay. Now, let's see, I kind of like the light and shadow that's forming. I don't want to go too light in here, but I think I can kind of contribute to the texture a little bit. So this is really just using essentially the weight of the pencil itself. So I'm just kind of stabilizing it back here with this, these fingers. And again, thinking about the flow, kind of, it's more of a kind of a rocking motion. And then there's a little bit of kind of reflected light in here. And I do want to I do want to create a little bit more texture to create that rounded quality over the, the snout. So thinking about really kind of wrapping up and over. And we could stick with this for a while. You know, we can, um, you know, this is, this is a part where, you know, for, we each have kind of our own tolerance for uh, kind of detail. And in some days, I, you know, just that's all I want is I just want to sit down and just get fixated on something small. Um, but most of the time, I get really impatient and I start to, it, it feels like claustrophobia to me. So I need to be careful with that. You know, sometimes I just like, I, I look at some of these kind of finer details and I just want to go like that. Like I just want to do a big movement. Um, and so, uh, I, you know, I think that is something to kind of pay attention to for yourself and see like really what kind of, what are the, what marks are kind of, kind of connecting with you? And then I want to get these eyelashes in here.
And so it feels like sometimes all I'm doing is really just kind of tapping on the page. Um, and so then, and also what I'm thinking about here is that to get that, you know, this, this upper eyelid is wrapping around the sphere of the eye. Um, and so it's not just the direction of the marks that we're paying attention to, but it's a little bit stronger in the light up here. And then it trails off as we wrap around. So I'm applying just a little bit more pressure on the top here. And see how that, and I'm kind of stepping back from it now, being able to see this small kind of video projection there um, and see how that, that lands. Because you know, contrast is really one of those things that's difficult to interpret correctly when you're up close. Um, as you step back from it, that's when you're really going to see how contrast plays out. Because I've seen a lot of drawings, and I've done a lot of drawings myself, that I'll, I'll kind of work on up close all day long, and I'm super happy with it, and I'll put it up against the wall, and I'll step back, and you can't see it. It's just this flat gray, and I realize, oh, all that contrast that I saw when I was up close just disappears from a distance. And so that's one of the um, one of the main reasons why it's really helpful to, to step back as you go, always be looking at it from a distance. And so these marks that I'm making, they're, it's a combination of pushing and pulling. Um, and so as I'm, as I'm they say, working under the eye, I can start to see these subtle bands of light. Um, and so I'm trying to think about what that general path is, but I'm gonna, I need to create that using marks that, that follow along the, the grain of that fur. So those are the two things that I'm kind of holding in my mind at this time. And I'm thinking about these kind of, again, these, these scoops, these strokes that are kind of scooping across the page. Uh, WA Strong, what am I using for the highlights? This is a Derwent white um, a charcoal pencil is what I'm using. You know, then uh, there's also, you can also buy kind of white chalk or pastel pencils. Uh, so this just kind of came in the pack of Derwent materials that I got. So they have a, a set of tinted charcoal that I've been experimenting with. That's what this drawing of the iceberg behind there, I'm experimenting with those tinted charcoals to try to get some contrast between warm and cool there. Um, and so this white comes in that and it also comes in their pack of charcoal pencils. So far, I've been really happy with them, although I think it does help to, you know, really make sure that you have paper that works with it. I've, sometimes these, these charcoal pencils can scratch on some papers, but they can work really well on others. So, I think, you know, it's one of those things to be aware of is, is what, what surface you're drawing on. All right, let's see. I think to help create that turn of the nose, if I, if I increase the contrast in here a little bit more, we have that dark spot there, so increase some of the lights in here. Um, that'll help to turn the snout a little bit more, I think. And I gotta check these highlights because sometimes, you know, with the way the light is falling right now, I'll be working on an area, and like I could just tell that, I, I, I couldn't really see the light, the highlights. And then I look up on the screen and they're blaring. <laughs> so um, I have to continually check against the, what's happening on the screen. So let's actually, I'm gonna work on some of these kind of whiskers. Again, th what I'm thinking about are is, I'm just using the side of the pencil, trying to, um, kind of predict, you know, kind of visualize the path that I need to follow along um, and then just strike it, strike it once. And as I go, try to roll the pencil, um, it creates a finer mark. 
And in this case, I've got a mark that I want to go this way and I can't really get my hand in this way to do it. So I have to pull up into it. So what I need to be careful of is I want that to be a soft landing and then into a harder end like that. And so again, rolling the pencil, what it does is it, um, you know, as you're scraping the, the white charcoal on the surface, it's picking up charcoal and can sometimes kind of lose that. So the dark charcoal kind of gets stuck onto the, uh, onto the, uh, the white charcoal and uh, it can be problematic. So rolling it kind of lays a new path of um, white on as you go. So I, have, I, I don't really feel like I explained that very well. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, with anything here, you know, I, I'm kind of improvising as I go. So if I, if I say something and you're like, what? Then feel free to ask me, so. I like this little bit of light right in here. The, the, the bounce light seems to get a little bit stronger. But kind of getting back to that, that concept of working from life or working from photos, and the advantage that I like to you know, focus on here is that you know, while I'm not really developing the skills of translating a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional surface, it does help me develop hand-eye coordination. And so when I do work from life, I'll, I'll have advanced to some degree. And I can just focus on texture for this as I want to as well. And I just feel like we're just, we're just kind of trying to be in control of our own learning and our own advancement as an artist. So, um, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so Patty is saying that, yeah, just called the attention to like the, uh, this overhead, this, this front view camera, you can see how white that looks because it's kind of being compressed. You're shearing across the surface of it more. And so all that white is really compressed. Um, that's, a good, uh, that's a good observation there. So at this point, I'm really trying to think about pressure and texture. A lot of this is not really making a mark. I'm using the, the white charcoal just to kind of scratch the surface a little bit more. Um, and where I need it to be stronger, I can lay down a little bit more pressure. And so what I'm thinking about as I'm, as I'm getting into the texture there, it now is, is thinking about where I am, like what region of the drawing am I working on? Um, and then what are the direction of the marks there? Um, and then moving on to the next region and kind of thinking about that. And so, and in that way, it's not necessarily about matching the marks one to one. It's getting, it's understanding how that, um, you know, how the how the physics of this whole thing works. You know, for the dog here, like how does, you know, if if we were drawing from life, all of this stuff would be constantly moving, and so getting it locked down exactly is not super valuable. But understanding you know, how the hair length changes and how it, how the, the direction changes, all of those things are kind of what help, what are helpful. So, um, let's see, was there another question? Uh, Joy is saying a gray charcoal paper is wonderful to work on. Yeah, I, I really like work. This, I think the Strathmore smooth gray tone, like tone paper works really well. I've been really happy with it. It holds a lot of uh, different media. So, um, all right. So now we're at this ear. We talked about that early on in this drawing, how it's such a soft edge that I just kind of left it fairly obscured. Um, so now I need to start to drop in some, uh, some more specific marks. And there's a, there's kind of some, there's variety here. There's some individual hairs and then there's big clumps. And so that's what I'm kind of thinking about here is kind of pushing and pulling with the the side of the pencil to kind of capture these bigger clumps of fur and individual hairs and understanding just kind of in this area, what direction uh, do these marks make? Um, now, because I hadn't really kind of locked in the edge here, I also need to be thinking about the, um, the overall proportions. Uh, 
I don't know if you can see it, but what I'm trying to do is, again, the, the, a lot of these kind of scooping marks that land and lift off the page, and then I'm rolling the pencil in my fingers as I go too. And I'm trying to vary those marks, because uh, one of the things I know about myself is I have this natural kind of rhythm that I fall into if I'm not conscious about it. I'll just go click, 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 and make a series of evenly spaced marks. And then I'm like, ah, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> you know, like it doesn't feel natural. Uh, and, and I kick myself and that's because that's just, it's an instinct that emerges. And so I have to be conscious about overriding that. Anybody else have things like that, that your kind of habits that you find yourself falling into that you have to intentionally break? Hope I'm not the only one. I think I'm just going to let this, this edge just be more unfinished. Try to find that balance between having enough information to describe the shoulder here, but not so much that it has the same amount of detail as the rest of the drawing. If I, if I let there be a bit more variety, then I can affect the, the way we kind of focus on this subject. How's that work? All right. Now this, this part here was the part I had the most fun with in the preparatory drawing, these little locks here. Um, so I need to, what do I need to do? To think through some of these things. Again, I, I, don't want the, I don't want the lights in here to compete with any of these bright highlights. So I'm starting with just the weight of the pencil itself making marks, and mostly what it's doing is just scraping away the charcoal that's laid down. Um, and then I'll go back in and I'll, if, you know, lay down a little bit more pressure um, if I need to, need to bring that up, but I'm going to kind of be gradual with it so that it, it reads as bounce light and not conflicting highlights, if that makes sense. Um, okay, well, I'm glad to hear that you've learned from these. Thank you for joining us. I've, I feel like I've learned from you. You guys are asking some really awesome questions. Uh, so what I need to do actually, as I, in order to do that, I'm thinking, my again, my focus is this, but what's inhibiting me now is that I have some highlights over here, but I don't have the highlights over here. And I think by dropping those in, it gives me kind of a point of reference for those values. So I'm going to drop in some of this backlight in here. Again, think about the, kind of visualize the path, but the marks that you're making may run in a different direction. And then that way we're kind of using, using the materials to do some of the work for us. And I think I need to have a little bit more light under here. All right. And now, oh, I love this. There's this one kind of strand of hair that um, I love there. So again, kind of push and pull. I like to use the side of the pencil. You know, that way I don't have to be sharpening as I go. And if I, if I were relying on this overhand grip using the tip of the pencil, I would have had to sharpen this thing 20 or 30 times in order to get through this part. But I have, I've been able to create these fine lines just using the, 
the side of the pencil just as, just as easily and saves me some of that sharpening time. All right, so now as we move into here, now I have like these highlights on either end that give me some sort of point of reference as I'm laying down some of the lights. Um, I think you draw not to show the good drawing, but you're... Sebastian is saying a good comment. I think you draw not to show how good of a drawer you are, but how uh, good a drawer we can be. Um, yeah, it's an interesting comment. I'd like to hear kind of more about that. You know, what motivations we have, you know, to draw. You know, I think there is part of us that likes to prove things to other people. But, you know, it's, hopefully that's not the only thing that um, is motivating us as artists. You know, sometimes as viewers, we get excited by the sheer technical mastery of certain drawings. Um, but I think it's also, you know, sometimes the things that, you know, excite me the most are less effective drawings, things that, things that we learn from. Um, Patty M is saying, I'm really learning the importance of lightening the hand. Charcoal is more mark sensitive than graphite. I think that's, a, that's an interesting observation. I, I see what you mean by that, that comment. You know, sometimes just dropping, you know, dropping a charcoal pencil or a, chick, a, tr a stick of charcoal on the page can leave an interesting mark. So, um, all right, so I'm kind of getting into these locks here. So I have the shadow areas established. Now what I want to look at are some of the, the highlight areas where the lights are a little bit strongest and how they kind of fold into those dark areas. It is one of the things I love about charcoal is that it, I, it there's a tactile quality to it that I love. Um, and the graphite can have that same quality as well, but I think there's, there is something really special about charcoal. But I, I do go back and forth. I'm kind of on a charcoal kick right now, but I was working with graphite in this series for quite a while as well. And so some of it is connecting with the experience I want to have at that moment for that for that drawing you know do I want to be expressive do I want to be kind of more fixated on detail so that's what's what's really most important in terms of capturing that the texture of hair is breaking up those lines and really trying to see the light and shadow structure of these larger clumps of hair. And so that's true in drawing people as well. There's an episode that we did drawing hair very early on in the series that you can kind of look back at as well if you're kind of curious about that, drawing, you know, adding that in, into portraiture, drawing people versus pet portraits. All right, how's that work? I feel like that's working out okay. What do I need? I feel like this area is uh, trickier. Let me see it. I think I need to add a bit more. Just need to have a little bit more texture in here, both light and dark. Come back under here and lay in a little bit of light. Again, just starting with a light pressure. Don't forget to roll the pencil as you go. Whew, okay. Mad Moments Go saying, you're using my, my mirror on your drawing and it looks good. All right, that's good to know. <laughs> I haven't really been able to check that. Um, Patty S., I'm glad to hear that you've been sketching for a while and that I'll be checking out some charcoal. It's interesting. There is a little fleck of red that is stuck in this charcoal. 
that I need to get out. It keeps making these little red marks on the page that I don't think are showing up, but there we go, got it. WH drawing, just went back to the beginning and to check it out. All right, so as we go into this section here, um, you know, one of the, it's, it, the gesture drawing is really important. Uh, I think it's an important skill to practice and the, the kind of the heart of a gesture drawing is understanding how an, how material or an object fills the space um, and thinking about the particular qualities of that. And so as I look in this area here, I'm thinking about changing the direction of my marks and the quality of the marks to reflect the changing quality of the fur, right? And, and sometimes that's just an instinct where you, you're just kind of observing it and you're just letting your hand react to it. And sometimes you need a bit more conscious thought. But you know, if you're doing a gesture of a plant, for example, you might treat the, the marks of the stem differently than the marks of the leaf. Or if you're drawing a flower, then the, the petals might have a different quality of mark than the, the stem. Um, if you're drawing a portrait and you're creating a gesture, then perhaps the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the hair might have a different quality of mark than, than the, the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And so uh, just something to kind of be thinking about is, is allowing your hand to react to some of those, those changes in that. So I'm trying to, again, kind of consciously change the, the quality of my marks here to reflect the, the fact that that, that fur changes quality. Um, so we have kind of these, these really kind of nice and rich and kind of fine um, you know, locks here, and then it gets a little bit scruffier underneath it. So just something that I like to think about as I'm working. And so I realized that some of these, these, these locks aren't necessarily matching one to one, but that's all right. I just wanted to, to read as an effective drawing of this dog and kind of capture the quality of how these goldens kind of express. I'm just gonna let this kind of just be loosely finished down in here, but I don't want it to feel distracting. So that's the hard part is knowing, and you can let some areas feel unfinished. You know, if it's too unfinished and it feels distracting, like this just feels like empty space. So I need to have something so it doesn't feel like there's just this head floating on the page. But I, at the same time, I don't want it to be the same level of finish as the, uh, the rest of the dog. So I think we're we're pretty much we're pretty much there. I feel like we we got the got the essence of this creature. Um, you know, I may still work on this a little bit more, but um, love to hear if you have any other questions, observations, things like that. Uh, I think what I need to do actually is I need to work on this, add a little bit of value back in here, pump up the contrast, not necessarily finishing the, the drawing, but if I increase that contrast there, that starts to um, give a little bit more substance to the, the dog there. Oh, and then the, I think the, the collar, let's see. And reestablish that a little bit. Kind of just a quick gesture for there. Um, maybe I'll get that up in something here for the tag. I 
go back to this, maybe add a little light for that metal. I'm gonna soften that a little bit, so. But I don't wanna to get too fixated on that. Um, <laughs> I know he's doge. Um, thank you for the comments here. Um, I think I, what I'll do is just kind of work on this a little bit more, but I don't know as if it's really gonna, it's gonna change a whole lot, but if you do have any other questions or comments, let me know. We do meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're gonna work on this guy right here. This is an iceberg that has a lot of fun to work on. So we'll do that next week. Um, and uh, I'd love to see your drawing. So if you find in, in the description below, you'll find a link to the, the episode page for this. Um, and uh, we're gonna see a lot of you sharing your drawings there. And so check back there. And also, if you go to that page, you can find um, a link to uh, the materials that I like to use, like that I, that I recommend drawing with, and you can purchase them there from Blick. So um, we just kind of put together this curated list to help people find some of those things. And so if you just need, you know, if you just need a, you know, a charcoal pencil, or if you want to, you know, pick up some of the graphic pencils that I like to work with, they, um, you can find them on that list. You know, some of the paper that, that, that they offer that I recommend trying or trying out. So, um, check that out. Um, it has been a blast. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, some great questions. And so I really love talking about things related to drawing and sharing and uh, seeing your, your thoughts about how you approach drawing. So thank you all for joining me. This has been a blast. Uh, Margaret, thanks for those comments. Thanks for the great comments, everybody. Uh, it is really helpful. I do get nervous. It is intimidating. I don't want to screw up. <laughs> so I'm going to be open about that uh, because I have certainly had ups and downs throughout this whole uh, adventure. You know, some drawings work out better than others. Um, and I don't consider myself a master. Uh, so <laughs> I see some of these great artists out there that do some amazing work. And, uh, you know, I, who know, they never know if this is actually going to work today. So I appreciate it, all the support. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I think I'll call it a day. Again, thanks for joining me. Join me next week. Check out tomorrow, uh, Painting Together with Gigi Chen. She's going to be working on this chicken. So, um, if you've been following that, I think you'll enjoy that if you're an artist. And if you haven't checked her out, you can see all of those episodes up on our YouTube channel and on Artist Network. So, um, perfect. Have a great week, everybody. I am really excited. We're going to be ending the year soon and we'll just continued momentum into the next season of this stuff. So, um, uh, JC is saying just checked and they aren't offering the Hanamula paper. Yeah, that Hanamula paper is kind of tricky to find. So what I, I put together on that list um, is this tone paper should be there. Some of the other Strathmore drawing paper. Um, and then Arches makes a, a nice rag paper. I believe that's the one that's on there. Um, yeah, so see what, uh, you know, see what they've got. You know, again, it's uh, working with the paper. It, it it, it's really helpful to experiment and see what works with the way you work and the materials that you've got. It's a relationship between you and the materials and then the materials with each other. And so um, it's worth ex kind of experimenting and see what works. So, um, Oh, Charles, uh, or is that a Marie uh, asking, can, can you address maintaining blending stumps or sanding, sanding or sharpening? Uh, yet, so the, this is a relatively new blending stump and I'll use it for a while. And since I use the side of it, it kind of holds up for a while. Um, but, you know, I've got a lot of these old ones here that are pretty beat to heck. So, um, and these ones, especially these tortillions can, um, it can, they can lose their point a bit. So I, I don't really maintain them. I do, when they're done, I kind of just move on to a new one. So I, um, they're pretty cheap, so I just like to buy a stock of them as, and go through them as they go. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess technically you can kind of sand them down, but I've, I've never done that. So, um, oh, uh, Greg is asking about the Durwent paper. Yeah, so it's a, the light fast paper I've worked with, um, and I think that works well for, for some media. Um, you know, some of the, and it depends on the, it, it's really designed for colored pencil and it works really well for the, the graphic line, the graphic uh, graphite pencils. I love it on there. Um, sometimes charcoal can have a harder 
more of a challenge. It works really well for vine charcoal. I love that because it is a cotton rag paper, but it does hold things really well. Um, and so I find that it, um, sometimes it doesn't lift off as well, depending on how the, the pressure I'm using or the type of material. So um, if it is available, I didn't see it in um, on the Black store, but I'll, I've got to check that out because maybe I could put that on the list. Um, yeah, finding Hanamula is not, not easy, but if you can, I love it. I really like the Hanamula paper, so, um, so perfect. Just checking to see if there's any other questions. Looks like we are good to go. Thank you for checking out those links, though, and I always love to hear the recommendations that you have. Uh, you know, Greg, you've, uh, you've mentioned the, uh, the eraser that, um, or the Tombow Zero eraser, I think. I, gotta, I still have to get one of those things. Um, uh, Greg is saying, it's trying to find the Derwent with graphite and it's hard to find, huh? Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that, see if I can get a little bit more information, see if I've got some context at Derwent that maybe I can get some good info there. Um, I do use a kneaded eraser, Sebastian. I've got one here. This is a new one. Um, I've got, you can see the difference. <laughs> This is the one I've been using for a while now. This is probably about six months worth, and it I've been doing so much uh, graphite drawing that has really become slick. But I could I could still use this. This stuff stays workable forever. This is a Prismacolor needed eraser. I just happened to grab a new one today. Um, looks like we have some good comments about materials. So I'm hanging on a little bit longer. Um, it looks like everybody's through. The Tombow Mono Zero, yes, Greg, thank you for that. If you haven't checked out Greg's work, it's awesome. Really solid uh, architectural uh, drawings there. Nice stuff, bud. So, um, all right, we're good to go. I'm gonna sign off. I keep saying that, we're dragging this out. So, <laughs> see you all next week.